Hi everyone, today we're gonna to be looking at this relief model of the ovary. We're gonna go through some of the key uh, structures that we find in this model. We're gonna start on top. We're gonna to see this ligament. This is called the mesoovarium ligament. As we work our way into the ovary, we're gonna separate this into some general layers. We start with the outermost layer. This is gonna be the cortex. As we work our way towards the inside, this is gonna be the medulla. Before we look at some of these macro structures or big structures, bigger structures that we see, let's look at this outside layer. Uh, I want to point out this germinal epithelium. This is this pink and blue dotted layer. As we move our way down, we're going to get a connective tissue layer. This is going to encase this ovary and kind of protect it. It is a connective tissue layer. It's called the tunica albuginea. Okay, so those are our basic layers that are going to surround uh, some of the general structures. As we work internal, we're going to start at our primordial follicles. Okay, these are all these follicles here. These are kind of paused uh, through meiosis. These are uh, developed and situated at birth by about seven months uh, in utero. Uh, all the eggs that females will have will be housed here in the primordial follicle nest. Uh, usually about 300,000 is a good typical number that we see. By puberty, uh, that number drops to about 100,000 uh, primordial follicles left or, or eggs left in the egg nest. So we look at our first little structure here. This is the smallest of our follicles. This is going to be a primary follicle with the primary oocyte. As we get a little bigger and as we're developing this follicle, we're going to convert it or change it into a secondary follicle. Still primary oocyte here. That oocyte hasn't really divided yet. It's still a diploid cell. Now what really differentiates the uh, secondary follicle from the primary follicle is going to be uh, the appearance of this follicular antrum. Right, so this fluid filled cavity. And then we're gonna get a cell layer here. That cell layer uh, is a granulosa cell layer. So we're gonna find these granulosa cells and these granulosa cells are gonna help develop this corona radiata that we see in this large graphian follicle. They're also going to degenerate into uh, this corpus luteum. We'll talk about this in a second. That's going to help luteinize or secrete some major hormones here. Okay, so again, just to review, we have our primary follicle, primary oocyte. We have our secondary follicle with our nice fluid-filled antrum, our granulosal cells, with again, a primary oocyte, so secondary follicle, primary oocyte. We now go to these structures here. We have one, two, three of them. This is going to be our uh, corpus luteum. So from our secondary follicle, we hit our graphian, graphian follicle. This is a tertiary follicle. With now, we see a change. We have a haploid ovum. This is a... Uh, mature uh, secondary oocyte. It's going to be surrounded by this corona radiata and that corona radiata, those granulosa cells are going to line that fluid filled cavity. Now the egg here is being expulsed. So this is going to be an ovulation phase here. Now this structure is going to degenerate. It's going to degenerate to an endocrine gland. So right here we have that corpus luteum. That's that degeneration. And it's going to secrete a couple hormones. Uh, we're going to see inhibin. We're going to see uh, estrogen. And the major hormone here is going to be progesterone. This is going to pretty much tell uh, the body uh, whether we've been have fertilized that egg, whether we're pregnant or not pregnant. Uh, if that egg is fertilized, this structure, this corpus luteum will persist and it will continue for 40 weeks to pump out progesterone. Uh, if fertilization does not occur, this structure will degenerate even further. Progesterone levels and estrogen levels will drop, signaling uh, menses, which will be our next stage uh, or, or beginning of our uh, uterine phase. Now this structure, again, if pregnancy does not occur, all those hormones drop, it degenerates into this scar tissue. It's called the corpus albicans. So every time we ovulate, every time we do not fertilize an egg, this scar tissue will persist. Okay, this is our ovary. I hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck studying.